Hello, my name is Maurizio Stucchetto, owner of Barbasso. With the Design Virtual Design Festival, we still have a chance to stay together. A big hug, Maurizio. Thanks, Maurizio. We're really going to miss you this year, and we look forward to seeing you and all of our friends at Barbasso again next year. Today, Design launches Virtual Design Festival, which we hope will help bring people together during these difficult days. I'm here at the VDF Broadcast Studio, which we've set up in our home in North London. To kick things off, we invited our friends around the world to send us video messages explaining how they're faring and how things are where they are. We are all living in a surreal situation. It's really like when reality goes much farther than science fiction itself. Milano is one of the cities most affected by this pandemic. In this moment, we share the house with my wife and my two sons. Remember, after the plague, there will be a renaissance. I live this time in smart working with my collaborators. And I think that after the experience of these days, I'm sure that we will have new interesting challenges of globally sustainable solution. So that the next Salone 21 in Milano will be fantastic. Of course, I'm sad that the Ventura projects during the Milano Design Week has been suspended. Uh, this is a terrible period for everybody. But I also have high hopes. I really hope that we find time to clear our heads a little bit, to focus a bit. And I also really hope that the design world and the creatives can do something with this. It's up to them. Uh, I'm just out of um, three weeks of uh, symptoms of uh, the COVID-19. I'm uh, in my home, been working in my home uh, with our team working on online. Uh, it's been a, a really strange, uh, surreal period. Uh, but I do feel like that shared struggle is uh, bringing people together, bringing us closer. So I'm, I'm here working from home and, um, you know, just keeping drawing, keeping sketching, um, looking forward to being back with people, hugging and brainstorming with the team. I'm delighted that Design is launching the Virtual Design Festival. In these challenging times, it's important for the design fraternity to connect and to see how we can reimagine the world going forward post the COVID. We as designers have a great responsibility to reimagine how we think and design, being super sensitive to environmental issues and to be conscious that we are entering into the age of frugality. Uh, I've been finding myself getting out a lot of ideas that have been sitting around waiting for my attention, so that's a good thing. Uh, I hope all of you out there are using this time to express yourselves, explore your creativity, uh, build your knowledge, all of those good things. You know, the world needs us. Now's the time for creativity to shine. So I've been finding this time to be a great exercise in presence and gratitude uh, and just seeing it as an opportunity to celebrate a lot of life's little things that are so often overlooked. It is a really difficult, really sad time in the world and in the city and that sadness permeates pretty much every part of the city uh, and it's a time for compassion and for taking care of ourselves and I think um, it's a time to take in uh, that as designers we're about thinking about the future. There are lines outside the gun shops after they've just reopened having been deemed essential businesses. There are bootleg mask sellers on the street corners. So LA so often the setting for so many sci-fi films is now a live action dystopian film playing out in real time. I'm here in Brooklyn, uh, extremely lucky and grateful to be safe and uh, comfortable in my quarantine and um, very aware that that's not the case for everybody and uh, so thankful to everybody who's on the front lines at the moment keeping us all safe and fed and healthy. I guess like everybody working in the creative industries now, I'm wondering what to say and uh, what our role is and uh, what we can learn from these um, extremely complicated 
um, times that we're all sharing together now. Hi, I'm Eric Chen here in Shanghai. I'm shooting this outside partly just because I can. Uh, I just got out of a home quarantine, uh, a mandatory 14-day home quarantine uh, yesterday that was very strictly enforced. There are still a lot of restrictions and, and checks in place, but I hope this offers a little bit of a glimmer of hope that things can, will, and are uh, getting better. We're in the Maldives. Uh, we've been here for a month. We came on an interiors project. We've ended up stranded, but it's a really beautiful island and it's virus-free. We all know that it is impossible to predict what will happen to the world and to our profession after Corona. But at June Studio, our daily routines have completely changed. We have switched from an average of 40 hours of travel a week to 70 video calls a day. And instead of hands-on design sessions, we are now using online sharing platforms. It's amazing to see how resilient everyone has been to all these changes. It's an extremely situation we all are facing at the moment. But Sweden are not locked down yet and it helps us as we have the production up here. So we continue to produce and uh, delivering out. Welcome to my kitchen in London. This is not the usual place you would find me, but I have to admit it should just be all that long traveling I do and all those really hard nights at the studio. Here you see me in one of my woven portraits. I'm gathering with my family and I'm weaving, which is my form of meditation and a way for me to reflect on what's happening in the world. Now we will count to 12 and we will all keep still. For once on the face of the earth, let's not speak in any language. Let's stop for a second and not move our arms so much. It would be an exotic moment, without rush or engines. We would all be together in a sudden strangeness. In these days, we are radically changing the way we are working and, of course, also operating as designers. But this can also be seen as an opportunity. What we mean is that, of course, we have much more time to concentrate on the work we actually love, but also to reevaluate what we have been doing so far. At least this is what we are, we are doing because we hope this can really be a chance to rethink on a more sustainable level uh, our profession because we believe this is the only way forward. I think as a community it's really important that we all try and keep supporting each other so that people know that there is still business there when we come out of this. So stay safe and stay well and keep working and keep trying to figure out different ways that you can work because we will come out of this we will come out stronger and we'll all still be there for each other. We're fine and luckily the virus hasn't hit too hard here. We've been wondering why that is. I think one of the reasons is we wear these masks quite a lot, especially in the winter during the flu, flu months. Um, we also don't shake hands. Uh, we bow a lot, which is really great. And there's certainly no huggy kissy stuff. And I think that's uh, probably really helped. One of the great things is that we don't have to travel as much, certainly internationally, and so that jet lag is not hitting too hard anymore, which is cool. It gives us a lot more time um, to design, and it's also given us a chance to pause, press the reset button, and think about what really matters. I am Lee Edelcourt, or Lee Devay. I am um, in South Africa. After Indaba conference, we had to stay here because of the virus, so we are in exile together with my friend and colleague, Fimando. Lost all our assignments, lost many clients on hold, but somehow time is filling up with the future of our planet and our work and what design will represent and how fashion can survive and how restaurants can start up and so on. So my work as forecaster will become possibly even more important and more extreme than ever. I think it's very important that we stop thinking about what we studied or where, where, where we come from or our professions and, and start thinking about how we can help the less privileged, people that are outside that cannot stay home and, uh, and how, can, can we, how can we help in any way we can. I don't know another creative that's not the anxious type and I'm no different. But on the flip side, I think productivity has increased. We've cut down on commute time, unnecessary meetings, and my home really is a deep work chamber. I miss conversations with my colleagues, but I am definitely more productive. And my new workmates, 
aren't so bad either. As we're facing these challenges, I think it's really important to try and be as creative as possible. We should be looking back at this time and thinking, wow, we were incredibly productive on all levels. I'm sure it's been a really tough time for lots of people around the world, um, trying to come to terms with you know, this self-isolation situation. Um, but what I've been doing at home is, is reading a lot more. I've been trying to really reflect about things that I really care about and what's really important to me. Um, I've been learning also a new instrument, which is called the Nigerian talking drum, which I will not be playing for you because I am awful at it. I will play to you soon when I get better. Um, I've also been working with lots of um, models, making models out of geometric shapes, um, just trying to relax my mind. So I'm in lockdown. Um, half the time I'm a single mom to my boy, so the most creative I've been in the last five days is that train set. Um, and then all the rest of the time I try to go to the studio, try to get something done. I don't know, just making it through, trying to keep employees employed and not lose the rest of my sanity. I remember a sentence by Ralph Emanuel, as you know, he was the, the mayor of uh, Chicago and also chief of staff of Barack Obama. He once said, uh, never let a crisis go to waste. And so I think that's really what we need to do today, seeing how we can actually use the crisis to rethink what you do and also to see how can we use our skills in order to contribute to solutions. You know, it's funny because coronavirus to me is like a virus, but a real virus, but a virus in the system, the system that we used to live. When people say, let's go back to normality, but what is normal? The world we were living before? Actually, you know what? The answer to catastrophe is not about re-establishing previous order, it's about creating a new one. I have escaped the city for the moment, living with a friend who has a little bit more space, and uh, which allows me to, on my daily walk, uh, get some fresh air, to be a little bit more surrounded by nature and gardens, which I enjoy. What I realized as well is that we as creatives, creative community, are already used to unknown situations. Almost all of our projects are something that we start and we don't know where we will end, but we trust that we will find a way and we let ourselves be guided by our senses. And that is, I think, how most art, design and architecture is created. So in that sense, I think probably, maybe, of course it's personal, but I would assume that uh, people in the creative world feel maybe a little bit more secure in unknown situations. At least I do. Um, I'm not afraid. Of course, I'm very worried. But I also wonder and question all the time, what can I contribute? And although we are distancing ourselves from one another, I feel more than ever I'm interwoven with all humans in the world. This moment feels like a disaster and an opportunity at the same time. I see a great potential. We now could crack the nut with all our global problems we are facing. Hello, this is Maarten Baas from my studio in the Netherlands. And this is how I cope with the current situation. Um, well, uh, yeah. Um, uh, 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 yeah. Uh, um. Well, so obviously, uh, I hope you feel inspired. All the best. Bye. So in many ways, we must recognize that there is no return to normal because our default setting is what created these conditions for collapse in the first place. So thank you, and I'll see you all after the end of the world. That's what I'm sending you, some uh, California hugs, and I look forward to, uh, to this uh, digital festival with the zine. So, guys, we are dreamers. Let's try to dream about a different world, a better world. This is the greatest chance we might have now. In spite of this digital message, I really hope to give you an analogic hug as soon as possible. Ciao. Bye, Desin.
Ciao. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay well out there, and remember, stay at home. Stay safe, everyone, and see you soon. Take your own yarn, and together we can weave the new texture. I'm so looking forward to kicking this off with the virtual design festival, so I will see you all there. Take care and see you all on the other side of this, I hope. Stay positive, stay creative, and um, looking forward to see you seeing you very soon. We're missing our friends in the design world and we look forward to reconnecting with them at the Virtual Design Festival. Thanks everyone, stay safe, see you soon. Masalama and a digital hug from Dubai. Hang in there. Thanks everyone and thanks to BT Wolf for the soundtrack. Please send in your own video messages. We're going to try and publish one every day during the festival. I hope you enjoy VDF and I look forward to seeing you all again really soon in the real world. Oh. And that's my daughter stealing a cookie. She knows where the cookie jar is. Hope to see you all in real life again soon. Ciao! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Buongiorno. Ha <laughs> ha. The wild winds they weave. The night unfolds. Oh, creep beneath my sheet. Evade the cold below.